Um, so that's it. All right, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna move forward here. You can have your greeting time. Why don't you give your your wall a kiss or something? Your couch, give a hug. Your dog. All right, say hello to somebody. <laughs> Just greet them with that kiss of peace. Practicing some social distancing here, so you can shoot up some more hearts. I'll take a heart kiss right now, and uh, and I want to just get get into uh, into the Word of God, and um, and into a message that I felt like the Lord gave me from Jeremiah in a uh, in a particular time in Jeremiah's life when he was confined. He was confined, imprisoned. He was shut up in the court of the prison guard in the beginning of Jeremiah 33. So I'm going to read here from Jeremiah. I see those hearts coming in, so thank you. And uh, so just join me now as, as you know, we get into the Word of God. There is, uh, there's such power in His Word, and he's not, His Word is not uh, chained. His Word can't be confined by a plague or by a quarantine. Okay, so his word holds just as much power right now as it does at any other moment. Okay, so so again, I pray, Father, that you would bless each one listening, that you would fill this time with your power. Jesus, I ask that you would really minister your word to us. You would really open up your word and, uh, and, and show us exactly what we need to hear and receive this morning. So we thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name again. Amen. Amen. Let me get some digital amens as well on here. You can type that out. All right. So I'm going to read from, uh, from Jeremiah 33. And, uh, this is, uh, this is, this holds one of the more famous, uh, passages of Jeremiah. The, the scripture where it says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Jeremiah 33, 3, God's telephone number. I've heard it put that way. But I want to give you the context of this before I share this. This is going to lead us into communion. And I want to share a, a little bit of a word um, uh, more about what, what's going on globally and nationally with this coronavirus. And we're going to tie in a lot of different things today. So, um, so Jeremiah 33, in this passage, before God gives Jeremiah this amazing word, he gives, uh, he gives Jeremiah a word of such hope and encouragement, it's overwhelming. In the midst of such destruction and fear, Jeremiah is surrounded by, by horrible things. That's why he wrote the book of Lamentations, that book that you probably never read right after the book of Jeremiah. Lamentate. The word Lamentations means funeral songs. He wrote these funeral songs. And... Um, these lamenting, woeful songs because of what he experienced. But in the midst of that, God comes to him and gives him this tremendous word. We're going to look at that word together because this is a word I believe the Lord has for us uh, right now in the season that we're in. But this all happens, it says in verse 1 of Jeremiah 33, uh, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah a second time while he was still shut up in lockdown, I added that, in the court of prison. And the word came to him saying, thus says the Lord who made, who made you, who formed the earth to establish it. The Lord is his name. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Now, before I, you know, look at some of these great and mighty things, let me just stop and say that I, 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 God, um, there, there's a scripture in the book of Hosea where God says to his people, I'm going to allure you into the wilderness. And there in the wilderness, in a place of, of, of confinement, in a place that, you know, there, there's lack, there's not as much available at your fingertips. In that place, he says, I'm going to speak kindly to you. I'm going to speak words of hope and words of kindness um, Jeremiah is confined. He's in an enclosed space. He can't go out anywhere. He can have visitors. Uh, we do see that in certain parts of the story. Uh, but I'm sure his visitors were very limited. I'm sure, you know, there was a lot of restrictions on who could come in and who couldn't. Jeremiah was imprisoned because the king at the time didn't like the words that he was giving. So he was shut up in, in, uh, in the prison guard. Now, in that place, God 
speaks so powerfully. There's, there's, there's something about emptying our lives and, and, and being in a place of just confinement where something happens where we're able to open up and, and hear God in a fresh way. And God, when, when we're in that place, God, he, he, he wants to give us words that are gonna feed our soul and nourish us and build us up. And that's what Jeremiah gets. Now, when he was out in the fields, running around, busy, he was getting words from God about destruction coming and horrible things. But it's interesting, when Jeremiah is shut up and confined in prison, the Lord comes to him and gives him words of hope and encouragement and comfort. And I really believe, I, I mentioned it just before, that, that the world is being put on a holy pause. There is this, there's this sabbatical that we're in. And, and this, this virus is not from God, okay? I've made that clear. I've, I've tried to communicate that a lot as we've done communion in the mornings. God does not concoct viral uh, DNA and put it into children and adults and, and, and elderly and kill them. It's not, that's not how God works. Like this world, because of sin, because of brokenness, we invite brokenness. We invite division to come in. By, by us living in division, our, it actually affects us on a cellular level. Our cells divide in an unhealthy way. Um, I have a dear friend, Bill Vanderbush, who's been speaking about that on, on, on some of his, uh, his posts that he's been putting out on, on the issue of division and how that affects us even on a, on a health level. So anyway, we, we live in a world that, that is still in unbelief and still not embracing the fullness of the gospel and it, and it creates all these ripple effects. But in the midst of that, God has, uh, is using everything for good. He turns everything around and turns it into something sweet. He turns our bitter waters into sweet and delicious springs. And I'm telling you, he is gonna turn the bitter waters of this virus and this lockdown into a sweet spring for those who are willing to listen for those who are willing to actually um, to lean into the heartbeat of Jesus in this season and, and, and receive his word. And so I can't encourage you enough. We're, we're probably this week, next week, we're going to see increased lockdowns in, across the world. Okay, I am personally believing, and I'll, I'll share more on this in a little, little bit, I'm believing for some major breakthrough to happen around Passover and Easter. But but in the two weeks leading up to that especially, there's gonna be even more confinement, even more lockdowns, there's gonna be more stuff. And it, you, you could choose to see that as, you know, the government stripping away your rights, as the devil destroying and killing, you know, society. You can choose to look at it that way, or you can choose to see this as an opportunity to actually hear God in a way you have never heard God before, to actually connect with those around you even if it's just one person in your house, um, you know, in a way that you've never connected with them before, okay, with your family. If you're, if you're alone, you're not living with anybody right now, and I know there's plenty of people watching this uh, who don't have anybody in their homes, um, you know, we're, we're just praying that you feel an overwhelming sense of God's presence with you and his grace and his comfort and that you're able to stay connected with people virtually through technology and hopefully there's others that will, you know, will be impressed by the Lord to reach out to you. But, but there, there, this is a time of reflection. We're in the midst of Lent. This is happening in the midst of Lent. And there is, uh, there, there's something that the Lord just really wants to minister in taking away. I mean, all of the major things of society have been shut down, right? Sports and Broadway, and movie cinemas, I mean, restaurants, eating out, everything has just come to a pause. And, uh, and there, listen, God is right there in the midst of this, waiting to speak to us, not to give us a word of harshness, but actually a word of healing and hope. So I, I want to just encourage you, especially over this next week, to just really set some time apart to, to seek him, to get quiet, um, to, you know, practice some centering prayer, some listening prayer. Um, you know, just re and expect God come every day to, to your table and expect God to lay down a feast for you, to open up your heart and to speak kindly to you. He wants to show you things about your future. He wants to show you things that, that, that you need to invest in, right? Uh, whether that's investing in relationships or maybe even investing in the markets. Like there, there's a prosperity that's going to come out of this for people that are listening and not moving in fear. So, so I want to just, you know, just release that. And I'm preaching to myself first and foremost with this. 
uh, this is this is where God is bringing me on a personal level, apart from the coronavirus. So, um, so God comes to Jeremiah while he's confined and and uh, has nowhere to go, limited visitors, and God God speaks to him and says, "Call to me, Jeremiah. Call to me in this place. Call to me, and I will answer you." And I will show you great and mighty things that you are completely unaware of. Now, I, I shared this with our students at the School of Awakening, uh, how I was reading this verse in a bunch of translations, and I came across the New Living Translation. And God says to Jeremiah in the New Living Translation, if you call to me, I will show you remarkable secrets. I will show you remarkable secrets of my heart, of my presence, of my truth in this time. If you will just call on my name, I am gonna come to you. I'm gonna reveal myself to you. I'm gonna give you such a sweet, sweet revelation of who I am and what my plans are in the world and for your life and for your family. So this is a time to hear God. It's a time to call to him because he wants to show you great and one translation says, I think it's the NIV, I wanna show you great and unsearchable things, unsearchable mysteries. He wants to unveil beautiful, beautiful truths to your heart, to your soul. He wants to open you up in a way that you've never uh, experienced before. And he wants to teach you communion, how to commune with him. He wants to bring his presence, his glory back into homes. That's a big part of this, by the way. That's a big part of the hand of God is that he is bringing us back to a place of taking communion in the home. He's restoring the love feast. And we taught about this at our school, our last school of awakening. We taught on this, on the love feast. And uh, before the world went into this, this global lockdown, I was preparing uh, all this research on the, on the ancient love feast of when people would be meeting in their homes and they would be taking communion in small groups. And it's amazing now that that's exactly what's happened. I didn't even realize this is where the world was going when I was preparing that curriculum, but, but God, is, God is restoring the love feast. He's restoring communion, and I'll come back to communion in a little bit. Now, here's, here's some of the remarkable secrets that, that God gives with, um, with Jeremiah. And I see some of you guys are hearting and liking, so please continue to let me know that you're with me and you're, you're, you're hearing me as I go through this, okay? So, so God comes to Jeremiah. God, Jeremiah calls to him from this place of confinement and, and God speaks back and, and God says, he first, in the first few verses here, Jeremiah 33, he does say that there's difficult times right now happening. There are difficult things. There's a shaking going on because of, you know, just corruption at every level that God is dealing with stuff. And so he says that. He says that all of this corruption is being dealt with through this Babylonian invasion. An invasion of an army is coming into, uh, into Israel. And, uh, and, it's, and it is ultimately um, bringing judgment and destruction on the corruption and the evil that is going on in the nation. Now, we're not being invaded by a physical army, but we're being invaded by a microscopic army, right? I mean, there is an invasion. Of, of, of a microscopic virus that is, uh, is, is wreaking havoc on our economy and on bodies and on, and on human lives, on people who have lost their lives uh, already from this thing. And so he acknowledges that, I'm paraphrasing here a little bit, but you know, he says, you know, God affirms to Jeremiah, look, this is, this is happening and this is gonna continue to happen for a little bit, but, um, but it says this in verse six, okay? He says, behold, this is God speaking, behold, I will bring health and healing to you and your people. I will bring health and healing. I will heal them and I will reveal to them an abundance of peace and truth. Now, God begins to speak about peace and prosperity in this, uh, in this moment. He begins to, uh, to show them that actually, Everything happening right now is a setup. Everything right now is positioning the people to receive a whole new measure of health and wholeness and prosperity in their life. I feel so strongly, and I know many other people are with me on this, joining me with this, that, that the Lord is actually at work in this situation to teach us how to enter into a new dimension of his kingdom. And in the kingdom of God, in, in what 
it means to live in the kingdom. The Bible talks about being a citizen of the kingdom. To be a citizen of the kingdom is to be one who prospers body, soul, and spirit. That starts first with your spirit of being right with God, of having peace with him, receiving his grace, and then it moves into your soul where you begin to experience uh, things like peace and joy and patience in your soul in a way that you never experienced it before. You begin to prosper emotionally and spiritually. And then it moves into your body where you are uh, one who receives the divine life of Jesus, healing in your body. There is healing in the blood, and we've been talking about that with communion all week. There is a place of healing that God wants to bring us, even as viruses and plagues break out around us, that there's gonna be a people, and this, these people will multiply, who will take hold of divine health, okay? So all of these things, God is actually preparing us to enter into, to step into, and he, and he goes on, he says, I will cleanse them from all their iniquity from which they've sinned against me. I will pardon and forgive all of their iniquities by which they've sinned and their transgressions. And then this people shall be to me a name of joy, a praise and honor before all nations of the earth. And all the nations are gonna hear of the good that I do to them and they will fear and tremble for all the goodness and all the prosperity that I provide for my people. Did you catch that? Did you hear that? It says that the people of the world are going to see what the Lord does with, with, with those who are walking with him in covenant, okay? And let me get this out here. Prepare this. I got my communion uh, package here. Um, this communion, the bread and the wine, is about the covenant that we are in now with God. When you drink this wine, you are saying yes to that covenant. You are part of that covenant already in Christ. Christ included you in this covenant, and you are receiving that for yourself. So God tells Jeremiah, I am going to do such extraordinary things, remarkable things for people who are under my covenant. I am going to bring such a dimension of peace and prosperity to those who are uh, who are taking hold of my salvation. I'm going to bring such peace and such joy. I was talking to someone yesterday. I don't know if she's on right now. I can't see, but somebody who's a nurse, who's a believer and loves Jesus and, and, uh, and is providing a calmness in her ward and peace. God wants to make your peace, your, uh, um, your, uh, your joy. He wants to make the nations, actually it says fear and tremble. They're going to tremble at, it says, at all the prosperity and goodness I provide for my people. It, it, it actually, this, this is why, pro, this, is, this is a healthy understanding of prosperity. If you've had that, that word prosperity abused, uh, used, and, and, and perverted, okay, the word prosperity, it has to do with success. It has to do with wholeness. It, it, it's the same as, it, you know, the Hebrew uh, word shalom. Okay, shalom is a word that can mean prosperity. And, and actually, when God's people operate in true prosperity, when they're healthy in their souls and thus they can handle prosperity outwardly, like prosperity in their finances, um, it, it says that the nations of the world come to that. Like, this is actually, prosperity is actually one of the highest forms of evangelism. True prosperity is the highest form of evangelism. It says in, in, in Isaiah 61 that the Nate, that you are gonna rise, the glory of the Lord, deep darkness covers the earth, but the glory of the Lord is gonna rise on you and the nations are gonna stream to your light, okay? The nations aren't gonna stream to a bunch of depressed and fearful, broke, sad people, <laughs> okay? The nations are gonna stream to people who are living in joy, and peace and wholeness and life and experiencing the provision of God even in the midst of shaking and in the midst of struggle. And, uh, and so prosperity is, uh, is actually something that God uses in order to awaken the world even in the midst of crisis. And so God promises, Jeremiah, he says, even though all this stuff is happening, I'm cleansing, I'm toppling things. Listen, right now, um, and I'm getting a little bit into this, you know, from a prophetic lens of what's going on in the world. But right now, um, there, there are idols that are shaking, idols that need to come down. Okay, there are, there are major problems in our, in our stock market, in, in the way that our economy runs, where, where there is a, 
there is a shaking and a, and, and a cleansing happening. Now, fortunately, that, that affects, because of how interconnected the world is, because we're one body, unfortunately, that affects everyone. When, there, when, there's, when there's cleansing done to, uh, to people who are corrupt and in control, unfortunately, it affects um, those who are poor and impoverished, and, and there's, a, there, there's a shaking time that we have to go through, but we're gonna, we're gonna get through it. But there is actually a cleansing going on. There is a shaking happening. Of, of, of idols in this society. And, and you know, I heard the story uh, this week of the earthquake that hit right around Salt Lake City and knocked the trumpet out of the hand of the angel that sits at the top of the tower of the Mormon temple, right? The angel that, you know, supposedly came to, is it Joseph Smith and, and, uh, and, and gave him, you know, this new revelation, just like the angel came to Muhammad. There's all these, you know, Paul warned about angels. You know, he said, don't receive a gospel if it comes from even an angel. Only holds the true gospel of Jesus. So anyway, there's an angel that came, you know, in the 1800s that birthed the Mormon faith. And, uh, and they, have a, they have a statue of it with a trumpet, um, you know, honoring that angel in Salt Lake City. Well, there was an earthquake that hit and the trumpet fell out of its hands. And, um, and I, I believe that, you know, there is, there's a shaking happening on every level, economically and religiously, even with churches having to close down, Catholic churches having to shut down mass, that's unprecedented. The Pope just came out with a statement saying that, you know what, you can go to God yourself for forgiveness. If you are alone right now, if you don't have access to go to a priest, you can cry out to God right where you are. I love Pope Francis, let's give some, some thanks for him. Um, God set him in place for, for what the world is going through right now. But there's a shaking happening in the Catholic Church. There's a, let's, let's bring this home. There's a shaking happening in the non-denominational, Protestant, charismatic, whatever stream that you align yourself with, um, most likely a part you know, of our, our church here. Like, like There's shaking going on in our midst as well. And God is reordering us around family and around communion and around the home. And, 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 and he's going to use this to cleanse our understanding of this stuff. So, um, so no one's exempt from this. But this isn't the hand of an angry God. You need to know that. This is, this is God working in the midst of, of a ravaged world, a good father who is bringing his hand down onto the earth. And he's bringing healing and cleansing. And he is leading us into a place of tremendous breakthrough and victory as those who are embracing his covenant. Okay, so with that, I want to prepare ourselves for communion here. And um, let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, so let's, let's, let's prepare for communion. I, uh, I've been doing six days all, all week, and it's been so cool having people uh, join live. Six o'clock in the morning, 6.15, we've had a steady group of people uh, coming uh, online and, and being with us. And it's been really powerful. We've had people that have sent in reports of, of dramatic healings, um, amazing healings uh, in their bodies while, in the, while taking communion, just healed physically, instantly uh, in their bodies. Um, people who've been hearing God speak to them in a way they haven't heard in years, um, there's been incredible testimonies around the, uh, the communion table. And, um, and so each, each morning for the past seven days, this is our seventh day, I've been just doing a quick meditation on what is in the covenant. What, what, what is this about? What, what, is, what is this release? We know when Jesus lifted up the cup, he said, this cup is the cup of my blood for the forgiveness of sins. We know that first and foremost, Jesus shed his blood and gives us this cup in order for us to receive forgiveness of sin. What we need to understand with that is that sin, when sin gets forgiven, it actually releases other things into your life. It actually restores uh, all other areas of your life. It restores relationships. It restores your body. It restores your soul. It even affects your finances because, you know, that is, that is part of what God has given us to steward. And if there is a guilty conscience, if there is a, uh, if there's, um, you know, corruption in your heart, there's, there's fear, there's distance from God, all this stuff that Jesus came to cleanse, that, that actually affects the very work of your hands. So, so 
it, it, it's like the center of the onion. You peer, you peel back. Like the forgiveness of sin is at the center, and when that gets when that gets activated in your heart, when you know that you are forgiven and you are loved this much that that He shed blood for you, um, that that starts from within your spirit and it radiates outward. And sin is the cause of sickness. Sin, I'm not saying if you're sick that you've, you've sinned. I'm just saying that sin globally is the reason for all the brokenness in this world. And we all get affected by it in one way or another. So, uh, so sin is at the root of sickness and disease. Sin is at the root of, of poverty. There's, there's no reason for any country to have no water or no heating or electricity. Like there's no reason. It's because of greed. It's because of the mismanagement of resources. Okay, sin is the reason for all the problems in this world. So when you take hold of the cup, when you take hold of that for yourself and for your family, you are going to the root issue and you're cutting it down so that that, that corrupted vine can't come up and wrap itself around your body, your soul, your spirit, your family, your bank account, your work, everything, everything. This is going to the root, okay? So, um, so we're going to get our hearts ready right now to receive forgiveness of sin. And with forgiveness of sin, we're opening up ourselves to say yes to everything else God wants to provide for us. So hopefully you have some bread, something to eat, some kind of cracker or something, and some juice or wine. Because I'm gonna pray and we're going to, um, together as a faith community, Though we're separated by distance, we are one in the spirit. Please understand that, that we're all one right now. You are, we're actually, me and you are as close to each other as can possibly be right now. We are violating every form of, of self-containment and, uh, and, and all that self, you know, all that stuff right now in the spirit because we're all, we're, we're all one. We're as close as can be. So in Christ, we're one. Jesus is with you in your home right now as much as he's here with me with Rich and Martha here. And, um, and so, so there's power in this moment, okay? There's real power, there's real blood, there's, real, uh, there, there's a real uh, extension of forgiveness and love. So let's just take a moment and quiet our hearts, okay? Let's, let's all do this wherever you are. If you're with your family right now, let's just, everyone just, let's just be quiet, close our eyes. And I wanna ask Jesus right now before we eat of this bread, I wanna ask that he would come and speak to us even right now and that he would show you, that he would speak to you and let you know that he loves you and that you are forgiven. And you might need to release some things to him quietly. If you're, if you're in a place where you can say it out loud, then do that. But if you wanna just say it quietly in your heart, you might need to just release uh, you know, stuff that you're holding on to. It could be unforgiveness or anger, it could be fear. Um, you just give that to the Lord right now. He's merciful and kind and, uh, and, and, and he loves you so much and he wants to bring healing and he's already forgiven you actually, but, but we need to, we, we need to let go and receive that from him and confess sometimes just what, what, what we've been stuck in and just be real with him. Okay. So let's just take a moment. I'm going to give it, you know, about 30 seconds here of quiet. Precious Lord Jesus, we thank you for this act of such unfathomable love. This is the greatest, remarkable, secret, unsearchable reality that you, God, 
stretched out your arms on the cross and while getting attacked and accused, lied about, beaten, you extended your heart, you extended your arms and you said, Father, forgive them, I love them. You came to rescue us, Jesus. You came to forgive us of our sins and to heal us of disease. You came to restore our homes. You came to restore this society. So we take up that bread right now. Jesus, we take up your broken body. You took all of our iniquity, all of our shame. You took it all on your body. Lord, this bread, this is carried away. Your word says infirmity, disease, and sickness right now. I just thank you for healing in people's bodies. Thank you that as we take this bread, whatever it is that's going on in people's bodies right now, anybody watching this who does have an infection of some sort, a cold, even even the smallest of things, we thank you that you have provided healing for that, Jesus, that you've taken that away. Lord, everyone watching this who, who has physical pain in their bodies, anything that's out of order, anything that's not part of that original design. We just, we receive, God, your healing there. We receive, Father, you taking that away on the body of Jesus. And with this bread, God, we take the gift of new life. We take the gift of healing. We take the gift of of your power and we receive that into ourselves into our homes right now, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. So let's take and eat the bread. Gonna get our uh, wine here, juice. And this is what Jesus really pointed to when he talked about sin. And so as we prepare to take this, please receive into your heart the love of God for you and that there's no guilt, there's no condemnation. Even if there's something God is dealing with in your life, he, he's, he's walking with you in that thing with a smile on his face, with hope in his heart for you. You're his son, you're his daughter. And so there's no condemnation. Even if God is dealing with something really hard in your life, like he is at your side calling you into health, into healthy living on every level, okay? So just know that as you take this cup, Jesus, the Lord Jesus is with you only with eyes of love and compassion. He's with you and your family right now with grace and strength. So let's receive right now this cup. We thank you, Lord. We lift up this cup together in the spirit as one. God, we declare your covering love over us in our homes. We declare, Father, that sin shall not have the final word over us, that condemnation is broken. We declare the power of guilt is gone in Jesus' name. And so with that, no effects of the curse or sin may trespass. We lift up this cup against all trespassers of sin as a forgiven people, as those who are forgiven because of your covenant, Lord, your work, not our own works, but because of what you've done. We lift up the covenant and we say as a covenant people to every trespasser of sin, of sickness, of disease, to this very coronavirus, we rebuke. We rebuke it right now. We command any trespasser coming against our homes, our families, our bodies, all disease, cancer right now. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke. Fear, the spirit of fear, the bondage of strongholds on every level, the the bondage of sins in the body. We rebuke, we stand against right now. Spirit of fear, we rebuke you. We stand against this thing, even as a nation, on behalf of our nation and on behalf of the world. God, we lift up your blood right now over us, over this world. We declare this whole world is forgiven by the blood of Jesus. 
This world is loved by Jesus. So we, we command this virus to turn back. We, we command blessing out into the atmosphere, into our nations. Father, we thank you for this covenant. We take our stand together right now for this covenant in Jesus' name. And we declare that we are a healthy and prosperous people. And we say that the nations are going to tremble at the goodness of God displayed in this hour. We say yes to all of that, Father. And we receive, Jesus, this covenant for ourselves right now in your name. Amen. Come on, let's drink this. Let's celebrate right now. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your amazing grace. This is so good. This is so cool that we're able to do this. I, 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 think, I, I think live streaming technology was made for such a time as this. I really do. I think God like actually knew what was coming. And, uh, and, and no matter what happens outside, the gospel is going to go forth. Um, I want to share one last quick thing. Uh, I, I want to just remind you again, I have it in the video description and we'll put it here for those who are able to give. Uh, please, you can do that online and, uh, or, or that text option. So thank you for those who are able to, to sow an offering during this time. Um, Jacob or was it Isaac in Genesis 26? Isaac sowed in a year of famine. In the midst of famine, he sowed a seed, and it says that that same year he reaped a hundredfold. Whenever somebody sows seed in the Bible in the midst of famine as an act of faith, there is always this multiplying force that comes into that because it's, it's somebody choosing not to align with a spirit of fear. They're choosing to align with the kingdom, and the kingdom just comes into that alignment and overflows. And so there's going to be extraordinary blessing that comes out of our sowing, our generosity in this season. And again, that includes generosity to our neighbors, giving yourself generously in other ways, not just financially. But I do want to ask that you pray about sowing a seed and, and in the midst of, of economic famine and believing God for increase in harvest, okay? So, um, so I want to remind you about that. We'll put instructions in the comment section. So please hang around for that on, on giving. And, uh, and the last thing I, I just want to say uh, about this, and this just kind of, just to sum up this whole message this morning, okay? Um, we're we're going to be uh, going next week. We're going to start uh, doing a series on Philippians, um, the book of Philippians, which was also written by someone who was confined in prison, okay? Just like Jeremiah. So this, is, this was something on my heart weeks ago. Um, again, not realizing where the whole world was going to go, but I just, I thought, wow, I've been wanting to do Philippians for a while. It's my wife's favorite book, uh, so it's a gift for her as well. And, uh, and so it's perfect timing though, because um, we're all confined in some way. So we're going to do Philippians, which was a letter of joy written in the midst of, of confinement and in the midst of, uh, in, in the midst of imprisonment, Paul gets uh, in, incredible things. And I just want to say too, I, I don't want to equate being at home with our families with being stuck in prison. Let me just make that clear. I'm talking about the whole world being confined. I hope you are embracing this time, this Sabbath. I hope that you are fully connecting with those around you, fully connecting with the Lord. Even though it's hard, if we've been so busy, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a week or so to just calm down. But this is not an imprisonment. God wants to turn your prison into a palace. Okay, he wants to bless you tremendously with, with this time, okay? So this is the last thing I wanted to say, just in light of all of that. I found out just this morning that the word quarantine means 40 days. That's what the word quarantine means, 40 days. It's Italian, actually. The word, the, the, it comes from an Italian root, uh, quarantine. So, so, uh, so Noah and his family was quarantined for 40 days and, and for 40 nights. And... Um, I, uh, I, I shared a dream this week that a friend of mine had that was, uh, you can go back and watch, you know, the different communion videos from my personal uh, Facebook page, but I shared a dream that my friend had about six, five or six years ago where all this started happening and God said to him, when you see all these signs, cover yourself in the blood, cover yourself in, in the cup and begin to, you know, begin to come under that revelation of truth. But in that dream, there was a storm that came and, uh, 
And, and my friend, he asked his dad, who, who, was dece- who was deceased, but his dad was there in the dream, and he asked his dad, have you ever seen a storm like this before? And his dad said, only once. I've only seen a storm like this once before. And, and when he woke up, my, my friend told me that um, he felt like it had to do with the flood. Like, like there's something that's going to come that's, that's not unlike the flood. And, you know, the wonderful thing about this is God promised never to do that again. That's never going to happen again. There is not an agenda in heaven to see that kind of global death. Uh, But it's interesting that there was this confinement that affected the whole world and never before has anything affected so many countries. I think we're up to 160 countries right now that have been affected by this and quarantines are going up everywhere. And, and so I'm just looking at this dream that he had, and I'm just like, wow, this is, this is incredible that, that the Lord is saying we're actually experiencing something as a world that has, that, that, that's only happened once before. But in this new covenant time, that was old covenant, in the new covenant era that we're in, it's all about freedom and restoration and jubilee. And so, so this is a, a flood of grace that's going to cover uh, the nations. And so... Um, so even though we're under this quarantine, God is here. He's preparing us for something amazing. There was a rainbow at the end of that experience of Noah being, being stuck with his family and a bunch of giraffes and monkeys and things. Uh, he was stuck for a long period of time. And out of that time, God, uh, God sent him out of the ark to be fruitful and to multiply. And so there is a uh, a, a harvest coming at the end of this thing. There's going to be a multiplication that's going to be happening. There's going to be, we're going to be leaving our containment of the ark as, as I, I believe as healthier families, as healthier people. And we're going to be going out of the ark under that rainbow promise to multiply, to bring blessing and, uh, and, and all kinds of incredible things to the world around us. So I just wanted to share that. I just found out about the meaning of the word quarantine. And this is happening during 40 days of Lent, leading up to Easter. And so that's what I mentioned before. I think we're going to experience some amazing things over Easter, over Passover, the celebration of the blood. So just take all of this to the Lord, okay? Take this to Him. Spend time with Him. Enjoy your families. Enjoy people around you. And, uh, and, and enjoy this season because it's, it's all leading to great and mighty and remarkable things. Bless you guys. I love you. I'm going to turn this off here and we, we will be in touch.